this is uh, Mr. Anderson for Math 130, Statistics at Kellogg Community College. Today we're going to look at uh, normal distributions and some of their applications. We're going to be going through most of Section 6.1 and about half of Section 6.2 in the first of two videos for this day. Now, a normal distribution is a continuous, symmetric, bell-shaped distribution of a variable. So, for example, this is a normal distribution. If the distribution is skewed to the left or skewed to the right, it's not normal. And these normal distributions have seven very important characteristics, and the eighth one, we're going to draw a picture of that. The normal distribution is a bell curve. The mean, median, and mode are all at the center of the distribution. The graph is unimodal, which means that it only has one mode, and that is also at the center of the distribution. It's symmetric. That means the left side and the right side are exactly the same. It's continuous. There are no gaps nor holes, and for every x value, there is a y value. It never touches the x-axis, and the area under the curve is 100% of the data. Using a little bit of calculus, you can actually prove that this is true, uh, even though the area never, actually the uh, graph never touches the x-axis, 100% um, of your data is there. And now what I'm going to do is show you a picture which is illustrated in your book about the uh, normal curve. In the center of the normal curve is the average. And if you're looking at the entire population, that would be mu. Now, one standard deviation away from either of these, uh, from, from the norm, is about 68% of the data. And these uh, statistics were just grabbed right from the book to show you that there's approximately 68% of the data within one standard deviation above and below the average. Within two standard deviations above and below the average, we have about 95% of the information. And then if you go even beyond that, if you wanted to go three standard deviations above and below the norm, then you would get to almost all or 99.7% of the entire population. Uh, it's good to take a look at this eighth characteristic as it's written in words in your book, but also I think the picture really speaks volumes that you're going to have 68% of the population within one standard deviation, and if you're beyond that one standard deviation, then you're in a very small select group that's about 27% if you add these two up um, on the outside of the populations. If you are three standard deviations away, you are in a very, very small uh, percentage of that graph. But we're talking about a standard deviation, and to review a little bit from the first chapter or the uh, the first part of our unit together, we talked about things called z-scores, and a z-score is how many standard deviations you are away from the average. Now, since we're using infinite sets, uh, instead of using the small letter s for standard deviation and the x bar for average, we're using the Greek symbols, the lowercase symbol, uh, sigma symbol, and mu. So, to find, to remember what we used to do for z scores, we would take whatever our value was, subtract it from the average or the mean, and then divide it by the standard deviation. And again, from previous chapters, that was usually given by the form x minus x bar over s. And that was for a fixed set or a small set. But when we talk about the entire population, our value is going to be subtracted from mu, which is now our average with the entire population, and our standard deviation is going to be this lowercase Greek symbol for sigma. Now, Here's something kind of fun. What does the area under a normal curve tell you? The area under a normal curve tells me what percentage of the population is there. So what percentage of the population is there? Now, 
I'm going to basically take these first of three problems. And these first of three problems really want, you really are going to teach you the three techniques you'll be using throughout this chapter um, to look below a standard, uh, below a z-score, above a z-score, or between two z-scores. Now there's no actual um, context with this problem. It's just asking, hey, if your z-score was 1.65, what percent of the population is below you? Now, to show you what that would look like on a normal distribution, your average would be in the middle, like let's say this is an average test score, and your test score was 1.65 um, uh, 1.65 standard deviations away from the norm. Good, congratulations, that's a pretty good score. So 1.65 would be right of uh, the mean, and the mean would be kind of your zero, because that is zero standard deviations away from itself, and you want to figure out what percentage of the population is below you. You're going to feel pretty good about this. Now, to do this, you're going to look on the table and the table is going to be on page 784 for negative z-scores and page 785 for positive z-scores. Now what I'm going to do, hopefully a lot more gracefully than I did on the last video I made, is show you the table here. Now, on page 785, I'm going to try to see what percentage of the population is above, I'm sorry, is below my z-score. Now, I notice that 1.6 is here. And at the top of the page is the 0 0.05, because I'm trying to figure out 1.65. So how much is below me? 1.65. So I'm going to draw my finger from the 0 0.05, and then move my finger over from the 1.6, and I get 0 0.9505, which means that 0 0.9505, or approximately... 95% or 95.05% is below me with my z-score of 1.65. So I really don't have a lot of competition. I only have 5% of the data above me with that kind of a z-score. Now, let's say for this example here that your z-score was even better. The average is here and you scored uh, had a z-score of 1.91. Now, you, what you want to find out is the area to the right, and you want to see, like, oh my gosh, how many people are above me? How many people do I still have to worry about, or what percentage of the population do I still have to worry about with a z-score 1.91? Well, I'm going to show you, probably for the last time here on the camera, how to find these this information. Again... This is, on this page, I have all my positive z-scores, so I'm going to go, since I'm trying to find 1.91, here's 1.9, and at the top of the page, here's 0.01, and I bring that down, 1.91 is 0.9719, so that tells me that I am only, there's 97% below this value. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, like, wait a second here. I don't really want to know about how much is below me. I want to know how much is above. So when you have to look at the right of any z-score, subtract whatever your table value gives you from 1. And that will give you the area that's above your line instead of below it. And if I do my computation, I get roughly about 3%. So approximately 2 I'm sorry, 2.81% is above me. So by being almost two standard deviations above the norm, I have very little competition. But then this last question says, between two scores, find the area. So I'm looking between 1.68. Let's say I have somebody in class who scored 1.68 standard deviations above the norm. And I had someone who scored negative 1.37 standard or 1.37 standard deviations below the norm. And we want to find the area underneath the curve. Now I'm going to tell you what I found from sorry that I had that off camera. I'm going to just tell you what the tables say cuz at 1.68 you're going to be at 95% of the population is below you, and at negative 1.37 z-score, you're only going to have about 8% underneath you. 
So to find the area in between, because the 1.68 goes all the way down to zero, and the negative 1.37 goes all the way down to zero, to get rid of this white space to find out your area in the middle, you're going to subtract these two. So you subtract the two and you find out that that area that you have between those two z-scores is 80, I'm sorry, let me do a little subtraction sign there, is about 87%. So approximately 87% is between those two z-scores. So here's, the, here's what we learned so far. If you want to find out how much area is below a z-score, go get the table value. If you want to see how, what percent of the population is above the z-score, go to the table and subtract it from 1. If you want to find out how much is between two z-scores, go to your table twice, subtract the two values, big minus small, and then that will tell you your percentage that's between the two numbers. And that's kind of what I have right down here with my probability corollary. This symbol that points to the left is called the less than symbol. And that goes back to our first problem at the top of this page that the probability of getting a Z of the of somebody in the population having a score less than a Z score of 1.65 is 95%. And the probability of somebody having a Z score that's bigger than 1.91 is only 2.5%. 81%. But if I wanted somebody with a z-score between negative 1.37 and 1.68, I got a pretty good odds of picking that out of a random sample of people. That's a chance of about 86%. Now, the next section, which is section 6.2, really has you do these three things in the context of a problem. So, for example, this is the application of the normal distribution. Now, I pulled this from the book, and I also added some more data myself here. But I, this data, um, it said that the average, an average that a, um, assume that an average of $146.21 is spent on beauty products during the summer months with a standard deviation of $29.44. Well, what we're going to have to do is try to find our Z-score and then look at the table and figure out, you know, what is that possibility that women spend less than $160. And yes, this survey was serving, surveying women. So you may want to try to um, pause the video at certain spots here and then see you know, if you can do the problem. The first thing you should do is maybe make yourself a little graph to try to explain what's going on. You know the average is $146.21, which is zero standard deviations away from itself. We want to figure out how many women um, are spending less than $160. But I don't know how many standard deviations that is away from zero. So what I'm going to do is find the z-score. So pause the video and see if you can find the z-score. All right. Here's how you find the z-score. 160 minus $146.21. That's value minus your average divided by the standard deviation, which was told in the problem was $29.44. And this gives you an approximate uh, z-score of 0.47. Round to the nearest two decimals, and that way when you go to your table, you can use the column on your table and row on your table, or row on that page, to figure out what your percentage was. Now, from the table, um, we've got about 68%, and therefore, since we're trying to figure out below the $160, about 68% spend less than 130 bucks or 160 bucks. All right. Now, what we're going to do is pretty much the same problem, but just change what I'm looking for. Um, you'll see that I'm kind of patterning this after the worksheet I just did before. It says find the percentage of women who spend more than $200. All right, pause the video and try to make a picture of it and do the z-score and find your table. Now, it just so happens that uh, if you've unpaused this, uh, I've already done the work uh, out ahead of time. So women who spend more than $200, again, uh, I don't know my... Uh, 
z-score for the 200. So what I'm going to do is find it by going 200 minus my average divided by standard deviation, and that gives me 1.83. So really I want to find out how much percent is above a z-score of 1.83. So I'll do that, 0.9664 is from the table, subtract that from 1 to find my space above, and it turns out that roughly about 3.36% spend more than $200 during the summer months on beauty products. All right, and the final example here at the bottom of the page is going to be asking this. Find the women who spend between $50 and $100. Now, here's what I would do again. I'd pause the video, try to make a picture, and show what, um, you know, show, you know, you're going to have to find two Z scores. I'm telling you that because you're looking between two areas. And when I unpause it, when you unpause the video, I will show you what the answer is. Okay, so here's the answer. We are looking to see what is the area between people who've spent $50 and $100 with a Z score. Um, but we don't know what the z-scores are because we know the average is $146.21. So I have to find two z-scores. I'm going to find a z-score for my $100 spender and my z-score for my $50 spender. And you can see that my $100 spender is going to be negative 1.57 standard they're going to be 1.57 standard deviations below the norm and someone only spending fifty dollars in three summer months is over three standard deviations below the norm and you'll notice that these tables on page 784 and 785 they actually don't go too much further below 3.4 um, or above 3.4 standard deviations because the the percentages of the population are so small when you get to that section. So we go and use the table and find out that someone who spent 100 bucks is um, there's only 6% about less than that and someone who only spent 50 bucks there isn't even a percent less than that. So we subtract the two as per the previous page and we find out that if you spent only between 50 to a hundred dollars on beauty supplies according to this survey you're only about six percent of the population because subtracting the two percentages gives me about 5.77 percent um, which is only six percent of the population which means there's a little bit of the population below you and a whole lot of it above you um, so you're definitely on the low side of that and when we come back, we're going to uh, do the second page of this, where we start looking for, uh, we're going to start looking for cut scores, which is kind of a cool application to these problems.